everybody. Thank you for joining me for another one man review. Today we're looking at Goblin Girl by Ro Moa Romanova. This is another one of the books that I picked up in Fanagraphics Fanabuck sale where I pre-ordered everything from Fanagraphics that I want for the rest of the year and then got a bunch of gift cards that I cashed in on books that I have wanted from Fanagraphics or books like this one that looked intriguing. Uh, the cover caught my eye with its very strange, distorted anatomy. When I looked at the interior art, um, I was a little bit unsure about that because I find it kind of ugly, but it there's something about it that seems very, very contemporary to me and um, like intentionally ugly, intentionally strange. Given the title of the book, Goblin Girl, that made sense to me as well. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, I, I, in terms of the art, I do like it, but you know, I do like it, but there's this thing I've been seeing a lot where people are using like a digital, like airbrush scatter tool and they're making gradients with it. I saw that in, uh, that no brow press book, how to pick a fight. And I didn't like it there either. And it, I think in that book, it was also combined with like black, white and pink. And it's a strange, strange look that I just, something about it turns me off, but it turning me off like works in this book. Um, this book, the art in it feels very intentionally abject. And I, I think that's what's going on. I, I think it's meant to kind of gross you out uh, because this is a supposedly an autobiographical story. So when Mo is drawing herself, uh, she's drawing herself abject and ugly and like this awful self-image um, of her herself, you know, like fat scratching her belly, big nasty red ears. Like uh, there's there's a scene right here. Uh, where's it at? She's getting ready to go on a date. I'll talk about the story in a second. And she's got this awful goblin face and it's like she does herself up to make herself look better. But this real sense of like abject disgust with one's own body and everyone else around them, I think, comes through in the art. I I, I had to look up a picture of Mo Romanova because she's representing herself so bad in this. And she's actually like a very fit, attractive young lady. So I don't get this self-representation in the book. Um I guess also the story is like, the story is that she meets known TV guy 53. So it's, it's a celebrity I'm assuming in Sweden where she's from, who's probably like 20 years older than her, uh, while she's on Tinder and engages in a, in a relationship with him. And the, the story is about that. And then also just her struggles with, um, anxiety and panic attacks, uh, so there's like an implication in the story that she's a young, attractive woman too, that like this guy is kind of becomes obsessed with. So I didn't, I didn't buy into this representation of herself as like this goblin troll or the goblin girl. I get it that that's her depression and self image and everything. Um, so I had to go look it up and it, she seems like a lovely person. Uh, this is all just, you know, Picking yourself apart, I guess, which, you know, I, I'm not a fan of that kind of thing. I'm not a fan of people down, like, you know, being down on themselves, trying to be up on yourself. But that's what this book is about. It's someone with depression. Uh, so anyways, this and at, at first I thought, oh, no, like, here we go. Like, it's just going to be a depressed, depressed person book the whole time. But I really wound up enjoying this book and identifying with a lot of aspects of Moa and known TV guy 53. Um, so she, she sees him on tender and was like, Oh my God, this is like an attractive celebrity. And even though he's older, I'm going to swipe right. Ha ha ha. Um, and they wind up, you know, matching and she tells her friend, Oh my God, I matched with this famous guy and you know, ha ha shut up. And it's just a joke at first. And then they start connecting and, talking and it's like okay well you know um they're talking about setting up the date and she says i'm gonna wear clothes that say i'm only doing this because you're famous 
And I like that this book shows bad intentions on both sides of the relationship because it is eventually a story about an older celebrity abusing his status, you know, to get at, try and get at a younger woman. Um, and that could go in this very one, one lane kind of accusation type of story, especially since this is presented as autobiographical. I don't know. It, it seems loosely autobiographical. Like I didn't, to me, this was just a story. This is actually, if this is totally autobiographical, this is a really good example of how to do autobiography. Like no exposition. You just jump in and you start showing the situation. And I just read it as a, as a made up story. Uh, and then I, you know, like, okay, well, the character has the same name as the author. And I read the, read the bit on the back and saw this was supposedly autobiographical. Um, but it didn't feel like that. It just felt like I was reading a story. But it, it was like, okay, this could go totally in the way of like, it's all this sleazy guy's fault. You know, I got, uh, I got preyed upon, da, da, da. But it shows also like her ill intentions, like, I'm just going to go have fun with the celebrity just because he's a celebrity. I know he's 20 years older than me, but whatever. Um, they go out, they have a good date. He, he gets a little bit, uh, you know, too infatuated too quick. And so she, she like ghosts him for a while. Um, you start learning that she has had like in the previous year had pretty much like a mental breakdown it seems like due to smoking spice which i know is something that <laughs> does cause a lot, of, a lot of mental breakdowns so she's really dealing with panic and anxiety for the first time in her life over the course of this year and is in that vulnerable state when she's meeting the celebrity um, the cartooning even though the drawing is like distorted and odd and like I said, abject feeling to me. You can tell that Moe's Romanova is really an effective and powerful cartoonist because moments like this with the therapist's face, it's like, you acted that way and survived. Eh? And yeah, it's just such an obnoxious face that you want to slap so bad, which is exactly what that character is supposed to be. Um, and all, all of the cartoonings like that, it's, it's so effective. In this scene here, uh, they she hasn't really been responding to to the celebrity for a while, and then he reaches back out and offers to be her patron. He said, "Oh, I'm sorry I scared you away by telling you I love you. You know, I just getting worked up in the night that we had the day, and I, I've googled your art. You're amazing. Like you're an interesting person. Let's just be." you know let's acquaintances and i'll be your patron and she's talking to a friend in the tub about about this and how creepy it is and and they basically come to the decision like fuck it you know if this dumbass older guy wants to give you money take the money you're you're an adult you can control yourself like just don't let him take advantage of you so that's what i'm saying like there's intentions on both sides the guy is throwing out this really tempting carrot but the character also like knows moa knows what she's getting into in terms of like this guy's trying to lure me in um and fuck it i'm gonna take his money and then over time like he uh, he does emotionally support her she'll call him when she's having a panic attack uh she she calls him and he he talks to her and talks about how he's had anxiety disorder and she comes to believe that he's you know is lying and making that up but through the course of that she does become emotionally attached to him um i found the panic attack aspect of this extremely relatable that's something i've dealt with my since i was 18 basically um anxiety disorders and when she talks about panic attacks it's it's really accurate you know, it's like someone puts a gun to my temple and says, get scared and I'll shoot. Uh, and that's exactly how I've always felt about it. You know, they'll be like, you know what's going on. You know, it's all in your head. You know, you're not going to die. Uh, so just logic your way out of it. You're a super logical guy. And it's like, no, but that's what's so scary about it is that the tool I have, my logical brain, my brain that I'm usually in control of is 
the tool that's gone haywire and I don't have access to that. You know, that's what's so scary about it is, is I lose that. And she explains that um, very, very well in the book. Uh, so from there, it just goes on her dealing with that, um, how their relationship goes and how, how it falls apart. I don't want to go into all of the rest of the details, you know, go read the book. It's a very good book. Um, like I said, there's kind of blame laid on both sides, even though he's obviously in the predatory position. Um, and, and she does come out hurt from the relationship. There's a really nice kind of positive thing at the end of it all. Uh, there are some really cool sequences where more colors added to the book. I really like Romanova's art when there's color added. And then there's other times like this where the color fits more of the, the normal palette of the book where you can see that she's intentionally kind of playing with the bad taste of the Memphis design, postmodernist design from the 80s. And that's where you get the dock patterns like this and stuff where the process of how the art is made is becomes part of the patterns and just the design colors and the triangles and the leopard print and noodle art and all of that like um, 1980s 1990s roller rink mtv aesthetic that's coming back now not my favorite aesthetic but she's really nailing it um and I do find it interesting being being put to use in comics. Again, just personally, I don't like this weird stipple airbrush that everyone's doing, but it, it seems to be something, and it seems to be tied to that Memphis design thing of using kind of obnoxious over-the-top patterns and making them really explicit. So that's all intentional, and that does all add to, like I said, a, a sense of abjectness throughout the book which I think is also very intentional. All of the distortions of the figure um, really have emotional weight to them. And you can see in this sequence where she imagines herself uh, as a manga princess fighting some dark gloob glob uh, that she, she really could probably draw however she wants. And so this almost reminds me of Andy Barron's work uh, on the Ohm books. But you see that the, these choices are all intentional. I think the first impression when you see work like this is like, what in the hell? Like this person can't draw. What are they doing? Uh, but there's so many scenes where she obviously can draw, like has masterful command of, you know, perspective and design and all of this that you, that I really enjoy the stylistic distortions that are being made. And like I said, um, I loved reading this book. It caught my attention from the very beginning. It didn't feel like biography at all. It just had the flow of a really well-told story. I'm still not convinced it's entirely biography. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, and then I found the characters relatable. I found her struggle with anxiety relatable. I found known TV guy relatable in a way that he's like this, you know, I, I've been like an older guy dating, not people 20 years younger than me, but... You know, you're, you're like just a lonely dude on Tinder making connections and you get caught up with someone who is going through a lot of the problems that she's going through. And it's a dangerous little game to feel like you're you're able to help someone out and save them because you have a little more life experience and you've gone through the same things. Like, I've, I've been that dude. I don't feel good about it. Um, but I also never felt like I was intentionally being predatory. And, um, you know, in this book, I think the guy is, but I don't know, like I, I see it from his side as well. Um, not giving him a pass or anything, but like, I relate to both of the characters and both of the struggles and how those two struggles come together and lead to a bad toxic relationship for both people. And I, I appreciate, appreciate that about this book. So I think this is a really strong piece of work. And I think everyone should should go out and give it a chance. Supposedly this is uh, Mo Romano's first graphic novel. Looking online, it seems like this is the first major one. But there have been other ones. Or it's the first one that's translated. Um, so I look forward to seeing more of her work. I think she's a really powerful, powerful comic artist. After you've read that. Go ahead and grab yourself a copy of The Strange Death of Alex Raymond if you haven't. Um, it's my collaboration with Dave Sim, me taking over once he was unable to draw anymore, and then taking over the writing once he 
he quit writing for the book uh, with Sean on production. So you have beautiful, perfect reproduction of mine and Dave's artwork. After you ch check this out and start saving your money for the forthcoming projects by Sean from Living the Line, we've got Yuichi Yokoyama's book Plaza coming up. It's a totally over the top um, musical rhythmic like visual feast of a manga. Then he's got uh, Eric Creek's The Exile, which is a really cool like woodblock print type of style Viking book with some absolutely gorgeous art in it. And after that, Sean will have Centralia by Mil Van De Piet, which is a really fun sci-fi with a really fun conceit and a lot of like over the top wild hilarious characters and intense details and stuff so there's some some really really cool books that sean has coming out from living the line that you should start saving your ducats for thanks for following along take it away jack 